Everybody says that you should be selling your in-aid-in automations to other businesses, but nobody talks about what you should be doing after the sale. Do you host it? Do they host it? What do you do about the API keys? Let's break down what really happens when you deliver automations to clients and why most creators are skipping the hard part. First, we need to talk about whether you're self-hosting it or it's being hosted in the cloud. Right off the bat, I can tell you if you have a really big client with a lot of automations, you do not want to be using the n 8 cloud. You want to be self-hosting it. The reason why is you're going to be saving a lot of money down the road when it comes to how many automations you're running. Also, if you self-host it, you have control over the infrastructure, which means that you can give them really beefy servers that allows them to run massive volume with their automations. Now, the n 8 cloud might be a little bit better if you or your clients are worried about security. If you're working with something like a lawyer or a doctor, it might be who of you to just let n 8 deal with all the security stuff so you don't have to. Because if you deploy a server and somebody hacks into it, it's not going to be good news. Another thing you need to take into account is with self-hosted n 8 you can use custom nodes. Whereas on the n 8 cloud, you're not able to do that. All in all, I recommend the self-hosted option for 99% of our clients. That being said, if you have a client who's worried about security, who wants to be a little bit more hands-on and doesn't care about the price, then the cloud might make sense. Now that we got that out of the way, who's actually managing the n 8 instance? Most of our clients host their own n 8 instances. Whether they come to us with the infrastructure already built or they want us to build it for them, most business owners want to have control of their own infrastructure. If a client comes to you and they have no infrastructure, you can charge a setup fee to deploy their n 8 If you're going to do this, you should have the client create their own hosting account, put their card on file, and then you can jump in and buy the server you need or you can tell the client which server you need, in which case they'll buy it for you and give you the credentials. Some clients, they don't want to deal with any of that hassle and they would rather have you manage their n 8 instance. In that case, you can deploy a server under your own hosting account and charge them a monthly maintenance fee to keep that server alive. Usually this scenario happens when you have a monthly retainer clients where you're constantly building and improving on new workflows. Finally, you have the hybrid model. Now, in this in this model, the client hosts their own infrastructure and you charge a maintenance fee, but you keep their infrastructure up to date and make sure that nothing goes down. Let's talk about delivering the workflow. 99% of your clients are going to want you to log into their n 8 and install the workflow using the production credentials. The reason for this is because API keys change, sometimes API responses change, and sometimes things just go a little bit wrong, even though it worked under the test environment. So when you turn in the workflow, all they have to do is click one button and it's live on their servers. You're also going to want to package it with some documentation of the workflow and where they need to go to change credentials if they ever need to. It's a really good idea to include any information about the services they may be using, where they can find the webhooks, where they can find their API keys, just in case in the future, if you guys are no longer part of the picture, that they can troubleshoot their own system. Though it's super rare, every once in a while you might get a client that wants you to turn in a JSON file. These clients are often very technical and may even be reselling your automations to other people. In that case, the only thing you might want to do is put the JSON file in a Notion page with a little bit of documentation, hand it to the client, and you're good to go. Now let's talk about API keys. Generally, while you're building, you would like to use test credentials. This is so that you don't mess up any infrastructure they might already have in place and everything runs smoothly. That being said, some APIs are badly built and when you switch from the test environment to the production environment, some problems might occur. Though this isn't very common, it does happen and you need to be aware of it. Most of the time, the client is responsible for giving you any API keys that you might need. They might do that by giving you access to one of their accounts, by adding you to one of the services they're using, or by simply asking, where do I find my API key? If you're going to send passwords or API keys back and forth, do not do it by email or SMS. Instead, you want to use a service like Dashlane or OneTime Secret in order to send those credentials. 
For any services or credentials that already have nodes built where you need the client to log in, something like Google or OneDrive, you can hop on a quick call with the client and go over that and make sure everything is connected and in it in before you hand over the project. And for any other services that use things like the HTTP node, it is a good idea to leave an edit node at the beginning of the workflow to grab those API keys from. That way, if you have multiple HTTP nodes in the workflow calling the same service, all you have to do is change one API key and it works for all of them. Now let's talk about guarantees and maintenance contracts. By default, we give all of our workflows a 30-day guarantee that they are going to work and if any APIs change or anything breaks, we are always there to help our clients. That being said, some clients want the extra security of making sure that you're on call whenever anything breaks or when small changes need to be done. In that case, we'll charge a monthly maintenance fee to be on call. Depending on how much work the client needs month over month, that price will go up or down. If they need new workflows and improvements on old workflows very often, then that price will be pretty high. If they just want us to be there, if something breaks, that price will be relatively low. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys would like some more help with N8N, I am hosting a free community to help you guys out. There we have challenges to earn some real cash money. I also answer any question that gets posted in the group. So if that's something you're interested in, please check out the link down below. And you guys, have a wonderful day.